All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is VC Pramod. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says 50% of India's energy production will be met by non-fossil fuel by 2030. Prime Minister urges people to take part in efforts to eradicate malnutrition. Telecom and IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav says government is likely to introduce data protection bill in budget session of parliament. Three Naxalites including a woman arrested in Gadchiroli district of Maharashtra. Deadly clashes in Libyan capital Tripoli claims 32 lives. Youth Affairs and Sports Ministry to organize Meet the Champion initiative in 26 schools across the country on occasion of National Sports Day today. Hardik Pandya's all-round brilliance inspires India to a five-wicket victory over Pakistan in Asia Cup opener. Prime Minister congratulates the Indian team for their victory and US Open tennis tournament begins today in New York. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that by 2030, 50% of India's energy production will be met by non-fossil fuel and by 2070 it plans net zero. Mr Modi said that a silent revolution is taking shape in India with a rising demand for electric vehicles or EV. He said state and central governments have extended incentives and subsidies for the EV sector. The Prime Minister was addressing a function at Gandhinagar to mark on the completion of 40 years of Suzuki Motor Corporation in India. EV sector ka aage badhna tay hai. Yaani ye silent revolution aane wale dino mein bada parivartan karne ke liye tayar hai. Aaj jab hum EV jaise kshetron ki baat karte hain to hame apne desh ke climate commitment ko aur uske target ko bhi samne rakhna bahut aavashyak. Bharat ne COP26 mein ye ghoshna ki hai ki wo 2030 tak apni installed electrical capacity ki 50 pratishat samta non फोसिल सोर्स से हासिल करेगा हमने 2070 के लिए नेट जीरो का लक्ष्य तय किया इसके लिए हम ईवी चार्जिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और ग्रीड केल बैटरी सिस्टम जैसे एनर्जी स्टोरेज सिस्टम को इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की हार्मोनाइज लिस्ट में शामिल करने की तैयारी कर रहे हैं हमें बायोगैस फैट फ्यूल जैसे विकल्पों की और भी बढ़ना होगा Remembering the first interaction with Suzuki's chairman 13 years ago Mr Modi said when the Suzuki chairman showed interest in setting up a plant in Gujarat he was confident that with each passing year the company will come to know how much Gujarat is committed to development The prime minister said he wanted to create a mini Japan in Gujarat to provide the Japanese experience back home Prime Minister Narendra Modi urged the countrymen to join the Poshan Ma to be observed from next month to eliminate malnutrition. Mr Modi stressed that efforts associated with social awareness play an important role in tackling with challenges of malnutrition. The Prime Minister was addressing the nation through his Mann Ki Baat program on All India Radio yesterday. He stated that Poshan Ma is celebrated every year from the 1st to the 30th of September. He urged everyone to make it a success. सितंबर का महीना त्योहारों के साथ साथ पोषण से जुड़े बड़े अभियान को भी समर्पित है हम हर साल एक से तीस सितंबर के बीच पोषण माह मनाते हैं कुपोषण के खिलाफ पूरे देश में अनेक क्रिएटिव और डायवर्स एफर्ट्स किए जा रहे हैं टेक्नोलॉजी का बेहतर इस्तेमाल और जन भागीदारी भी पोषण अभियान का महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा बना है देश में लाखों आंगनबाड़ी कार्यकर्ताओं को मोबाइल डिवाइस देने से लेकर आंगनबाड़ी सेवाओं की पहुंच को मॉनिटर करने के लिए पोषण ट्रैकर भी लॉन्च किया गया है सभी एस्पिरेशनल डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स और नॉर्थ ईस्ट के राज्यों में 14 से 18 साल की बेटियों को भी पोषण अभियान के दायरे में लाया गया है Talking about millets, Mr Modi said the United Nations has passed a resolution declaring the year 2023 as the International Year of Millets. He exuded pride that this proposal of India was accepted by more than 70 countries. The Prime Minister asked the people to come together to increase awareness about the use of millets. He requested the farmers to adopt millets and benefit from it. 
पिछले कुछ समय से भारत में कोई भी जब विदेशी मेहमान आते हैं राष्ट्राध्यक्ष भारत आते हैं तो मेरी कोशिश रहती है कि भोजन में भारत के मिलेट्स यानी हमारे मोटे अनाज से बनी हुई डिशेज बनवाऊं और अनुभव यह आया है इन महानुभावों को यह डिशेज बहुत पसंद आती है और हमारे मोटे अनाज के संबंध में मिलेट्स के संबंध में काफी कुछ जानकारियां एकत्र करने का वो प्रयास भी करते हैं मिलेट्स मोटे अनाज प्राचीन काल से ही हमारे एग्रीकल्चर कल्चर और सिविलाइजेशन का हिस्सा रहे हैं Mr Modi also highlighted the importance of water and water conservation adding that this has been explained in the Indian culture thousands of years ago he said after he spoke about amrit sarovar in man ki baat 4 months ago the construction of amrit sarovars has become a mass movement under this campaign old water bodies are also being rejuvenated at many places He urged the listeners to actively participate in the Amrit Sarovar campaign and lend strength to water conservation efforts. Mr Modi said many festivals are lined up in the coming days. He extended best wishes to the countrymen for these festivals. In morning matters now let's listen to a discussion on highlights from Prime Minister's Man Ki Baat. The participants are Ashok Tandon, political analyst and Ashwini Srivastava, journalist. In his Man Ki Baat radio broadcast, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday touched upon different matters of public importance. Prominent among them were the issue of malnutrition. He has urged people to join campaign to fight malnutrition. Tandon ji, what are the major takeaways from Sunday's episode of Man Ki Baat and if you can briefly touch upon them? No, first of all, I would like to make one comment that this Man Ki Baat on the is practically every episode Prime Minister invites suggestions from the public and then now the system is that people can share their views in this open forum or they can even dial a toll free number that is 1800 11 7 8 double zero and they can record their message also for the prime minister either in hindi or english and interestingly some of these recorded messages may even become part of the man ki baat i think that is one best way of having a dialogue with the people and they can even give a missed call on 1900 and follow the link received in sms to directly give your suggestions to the prime minister so this aspect i think the people must know that in this interactive session with the prime minister they can participate it. and then once the manaki baat is aired on all india radio the air news the air news website and the news on air mobile app this can be listened on these platform and additionally it may be watched live on youtube via the air news dd news pmo and the inb ministry feeds so i just wanted to share with the people that this open platform of an interactive session with the prime minister is a very healthy sign and the people can participate in now coming to your point the major takeaway of man ki baat of course was how the country celebrated independence day this har ghar tiranga campaign which the prime minister gave an appeal was so huge success and in fact as the prime minister put it very rightly that it demonstrated the nation's collective might pm said his office was flooded with the all sorts of messages all letters cards they were so my office in tricolor he said i have hardly come across any letter which does not carry the tricolor or does not talk about the tricolor and freedom the prime minister said the importance of water and water conservation has been explained in our culture thousand of years ago he also mentioned efforts being done in the country to conserve water which you also pointed out tandon ji how important it is to save water and what all efforts are needed to be made for it as we know the amrit sarovar campaign is part of the jal shakti campaign har ghar jal nal se jal all these things or jal jeevan mission these are all part of the campaign and in fact the amrit sarovar abhiyan also is part of it because during rain plenty of water goes waste and therefore if you have to conserve water you need ponds and for that the amrit sarovar abhiyan amrit sarovar campaign is part of water conservation that campaign cannot be fulfilled if we don't conserve water that was i think one of the major takeaways 
of today's Man Ki Baat. Tandan Ji, can you please elaborate on the message that the Prime Minister tried to give through this uh, Man Ki Baat program on this festival month of September and October? In fact, in every episode of Man Ki Baat, PM never forgets to mention about these coming festivals. The upcoming festivals include the Ganesh Chaturthi, the festival of worship of Bhagwan Ganesha, the festival of Onam in Kerala, Haryali Teej is coming up on 30th of August, festival of Naukhai, which will be celebrated in Odisha on 1st of September. And this festival simply means new food. That, you know, like many other festivals, are associated with the agricultural tradition. Most of these festivals, like uh, some Vatsari festival of Jain communities also are coming up. So he has always been mentioning these festivals. Not only people make aware of the importance of these festivals, but also remind the younger generation that we should always be taking to our roots and the best way to keep in touch with our roots and traditional and cultural heritage is celebrating festival in the Parvati, which we deserve. And then he always wishes people all the best for the festivals. And this is exactly what he did this time. Right. Kandaji, you have briefly and very nicely explained the important aspects of Man Ki Baat episode. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Telecom and IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnava said that Data Protection Bill is likely to be presented in Budget Session of Parliament. In an interview to a newspaper, he said the draft of the revised Data Protection Bill will be released for consultation soon. Mr. Vaishnava stressed that the country's data protection framework should be in tune with the modern times and not look like an attempt to create a paper system for a digital world. The government earlier this month withdrew the Personal Data Protection Bill 2019 in the Lok Sabha, saying that it will come up with a fresh bill that fits into the comprehensive legal framework with reference to the suggestions made by the Joint Committee of Parliament on the bill. Union Minister for Earth Sciences Dr. Jitendra Singh said that more than 200 tons of garbage, mainly single-use plastic, have been removed from the sea coasts during the first 20 days of the ongoing 75-day coastal cleanup campaign. The campaign was launched on the 5th of July this year. The minister also unveiled a dedicated website to give further boost to the ongoing coastal cleanup campaign yesterday. The portal www.swachsagar.org will give a push to the cleaning mission. Besides, Dr. Singh also launched the campaign Logo Vasuki, dedicated to the youth of the country, as they, along with the school students, are taking keen interest in joining the coastal and beach cleaning activities. Briefing media in New Delhi, the minister said, the ongoing Pan-India coastal cleanup campaign has received an overwhelming response as public figures, film celebrities, students and people from all walks of life are joining it. Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, PMJTY, the National Mission for Financial Inclusion, completed eight years of successful implementation yesterday. PMJDY accounts grew threefold from 14 crore 72 lakh in March 2015 to 46 crore 25 lakh as on the 10th of this month. On the occasion, Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman said that in financial inclusion is a major step towards an inclusive growth which ensures overall economic development of marginalized sections of the society. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says 50% of India's energy production will be met by non-fossil fuel by 2030. Prime Minister urges people to take part in efforts to eradicate malnutrition. Telecom and IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav says government is likely to introduce data protection bill in budget session of parliament. Three Naxalites, including a woman arrested in Gatchiroi district of Maharashtra. Deadly clashes in Libyan capital Tripoli claims 32 lives. Youth Affairs and Sports Ministry to organize Meet the Champion initiative in 26 schools across the country on occasion of National Sports Day today. Hardik Pandya's all-round brilliance inspires India to a five-wicket victory over Pakistan in Asia Cup opener. Prime Minister congratulates Indian team for their victory. And US Open Tennis Tournament begins today in New York. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alert.
अगर आप कॉम्पिटिशन की तैयारी कर रहे हैं तो आप सबों के लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो की प्रेजेंटेशन है अभ्यास एक ऐसा प्रोग्राम जहां हमें नाइन टू एट नाइन जीरो नाइन फोर करते हैं आप अपने ऑडियो सवाल या फिर ई करते हैं अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर और इसका जवाब एक्सपर्ट देते हैं रात साढ़े नौ बजे शनिवार को ज्योग्राफी यानी कि भूगोल है इस बार का विषय और सवाल भेजने की अंतिम तारीख है इकतीस अगस्त आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप Welcome back to the morning news on All India Radio. In Maharashtra, three Naxalites, including a woman who were involved in multiple murders, encounters, and arson, have been arrested from jungles in Gadchiroli district. The arrested Maoists were identified as Ramesh Pallo Tani, alias Shashi Chamru Pangati, and Arjun, alias Mahesh Rayanu Nairote. The police said they were most sought after Naxalites and they collectively carried a reward of 10 lakh rupees on their heads. Police officials informed that Ramesh and Tani were arrested from the Koyar forest area of Bamragad subdivision in an operation carried out by the C60 crack commando unit of the anti-Naxalite operations and the battalion 37 of the CRPF. National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority NPPA will celebrate its Silver Jubilee in New Delhi today. On the occasion, Chemicals and Fertilizers Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandviya will launch the Integrated Pharmaceutical Database Management System 2.0, an integrated responsive cloud-based application. It will provide a single window for submissions of various forms as mandated under Drug Price Control Order 2013. It will also enable paperless functioning of NPPA and facilitate the stakeholders to connect with the national pharma pricing regulator from across the country. The election to the post of Congress President will be held on the 17th of October this year. The date of counting of votes and declaration of results will be the 19th of October. The decision was taken during the Congress Working Committee, CWC, the party's highest decision-making body meeting held in New Delhi yesterday. The CWC approved the schedule for the election of the party chief. Briefing reporters after the meeting, the party's Central Election Authority Chairman Madhusudan Mistri announced that the date of notification for the election is 22nd September. He said the candidates can file their nominations between 24th September to 30th of September. The date of scrutiny of the nomination papers will be 1st of October, while the last date of withdrawal of nominations is 8th of October. He said if there is more than one candidate, the election will take place on 17th October, while counting of votes, if necessary, would be on the 19th of October. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the 1.3 billion citizens across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Aakashwani Ke Saath. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ रीलिविंग द जर्नी ऑफ इंडिया सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस ओवर द लास्ट 75 फाइव ईयर्स विद ऑल इंडिया रेडियो फ्रॉम फिफ्टींथ ऑगस्ट द सीरीज इज बींग ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो हंड्रेड पॉइंट वन एफ एम गोल्ड चैनल प्राइम टाइम न्यूज बुलेटिन एंड अक्रॉस ऑल इट्स प्लेटफॉर्म ट्यून इन टू स्टे अपडेटेड विद ऑल इंडिया रेडियो In today's episode we bring you landmarks of India's political journey.
growth of regional parties in the country in the states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and West Bengal led to the strengthening of multi-party democracy in the country. In the second general elections held in the year 1957, Kerala elected the EMS Nambudripad led first communist government in the world. You see, I came to the communist movement through the anti-imperialist national movement. Within the Congress itself, we were in the left. And as leftist congressmen, we organized ourselves first in the Congress Socialist Party. At that time, the Communist Party was in existence at the All India level. Soon after, rallies and demonstrations spearheaded by the then ruling party of the Union Government, Indian National Congress, against the government's educational policies took place throughout the state. Following the protests, Nambudripad led communist government was dismissed under article 356 on 31st of July 1959 in 1967 DMK came to power defeating congress party under the leadership of CN Annadurai in Tamil Nadu professors and students they have very keen interest in asian problems and when they take keen interest in asian problems they pay special attention to india because they consider india to be the experiment station for democracy therefore they are interested in the success of democracy in india therefore they are very much interested to analyze our actions our activities and the results In 1977, AIADMK led by M.G. Ramachandran came to power in Tamil Nadu. MGR was the first actor to head a government in the world. Soon, another actor, N.T. Ramarao, formed a political outfit, Telugu Desam Party in Andhra Pradesh, and came to power in 1983, defeating Congress. Sri Ramachandran has been my brother and my guru also. As an artist, not only he a colleague, but now the present life as a politician, he has inspired me, has shown me the real path of repaying the adoration and the support we got from the people as artists. In Maharashtra, Shiv Sena led by Bal Thakre formed the first non-Congress government in 1995 in alliance with the Bharatiya Janata Party. I am aloof from all these things. I am not uh, uh, getting a view to all this. power politics i don't want to occupy any chair i don't want to uh, i don't want any position the country also witnessed the emergence of parties like shiromani akali dal national conference aham gan parishad mizo national front nationalist congress party jharkhand mukti morcha rashtriya janata dal janata dal united janata dal secular samajwadi party trinamool congress ysr congress telangana rashtra samiti and aam aadmi party In a bilingual live phone in program Corona Jagrukta series Dr Sanjay Pandey Professor and HOD Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences Faridabad will be with us tonight to answer the queries of the listeners on corona monkeypox viral fever and other ailments listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9:30 pm on telephone number 0112341230 You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts by hashtag Ask AIR. At least 32 people were killed and 159 injured in clashes between the Libyan forces and the armed groups yesterday. The armed groups had exchanged fire that damaged several hospitals and set the buildings on fire. Six hospitals were hit and ambulances were unable to reach the areas affected by the clashes. The two rival administrations are vying to control the North African country and its vast oil resources. The UN's Libya mission called for an immediate cessation of hostilities. The US ambassador to Libya, Richard Norland, said that Washington condemns the surge in violence, urging an immediate ceasefire and UN facilitated talks between the conflicting parties. Youth Affairs and Sports Ministry will organize Meet the Champion initiative in 26 schools across the country on the occasion of National Sports Day today. Few of the prominent athletes who will be the part of this initiative are Commonwealth Games and World Championships gold medalist Nikhat Zarin, Paralympics and CWG medalist Bhavina Patel, Tokyo Olympics and CWG medalist Manpreet Singh among others. Talking to AIR News Sports Secretary Sujatha Chaturvedi said that meet the champions is a unique school visit campaign started to create awareness about sports among children 
आज हम लोग भारत के ऐतिहासिक हॉकी प्लेयर मेजर ध्यानचंद के उपलक्ष्य में राष्ट्रीय खेल दिवस नेशनल स्पोर्ट्स डे मना रहे हैं इस अवसर पर पूरे देश में स्पोर्ट्स का आयोजन किया जा रहा है भारत सरकार ने सभी राज्य सरकारों से अनुरोध किया है कि वे भी इस खेल दिवस मनाकर खेलकूद को सेलिब्रेट करें हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेन्द्र मोदी की अगुवाई में हम लोगों ने एक मीट द चैम्पियंस कार्यक्रम विगत वर्ष शुरू किया था उसमें जो ओलम्पिक खिलाड़ी है उनको पचहत्तर स्थानों पर स्कूली बच्चों से लवाकर खेल में उत्कृष्ट प्रदर्शन और न्यूट्रिशन के विषय में जानकारी देने के लिए अभी तक 29 ऐसे चैंपियंस के कार्यक्रम हो चुके हैं और आज मुझे खुशी है कि नेशनल स्पोर्ट्स डे के अवसर पर 26 स्थानों पर पूरे देश भर में फैले हुए स्कूलों में आज हमारे चैंपियंस जाकर बच्चों को प्रेरित और उत्साहित करेंगे स्पोर्ट्स डे के अवसर पर मैं सभी को हार्दिक बधाई देती हूँ और अनुरोध करती हूँ की स्पोर्ट्स को फिटनेस को अपने जीवन का अभिन्न हिस्सा जरूर बनाए In the evening, Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur, along with Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan, will also have a special virtual interaction with a few sports and fit India fitness icons of the country. In his Man Ki Baat program, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, "Real tribute to Major Dhyan Chand will be the excellence of young Indian sports persons in different fields." 29 August, ko Major Dhyan Chand ji ki Janm Jayanti par Rashtriya Khel Divas bhi manaya jayega. हमारे युवा खिलाड़ी वैश्विक मंचों पर हमारे तिरंगे की शान बढ़ाते रहें यही हमारी ध्यानचंद जी के प्रति श्रद्धांजलि होगी इन क्रिकेट डिफेंडिंग चैंपियंस इंडिया रजिस्टर्ड विक्ट्री ओवर आर्च राइवल्स पाकिस्तान बाय फाइव विकेट्स इन द ओपनिंग एशिया कप 2020 मैच द दुबई इंटरनेशनल स्टेडियम लास्ट नाइट put into bat first pakistan were bowled out for 147 in 19.5 overs with opener mohammad rizwan's 43 run as the top scorer for the team in reply india overrolled the target for the loss of five wickets in 19.4 overs riding on hardik pandya's unbeaten quick knock of 33 runs while both virat kohli and ravindra jadeja played knocks of 35 each for pakistan mohammad nawaz took three wickets Hardik Pandya was a judged player of the match for his brilliant performance with both ball and bat. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Indian cricket team over its victory over Pakistan in the Asia Cup 2022 match. US Open tennis, the fourth and final Grand Slam of the year, will kick off in New York today. On day one, defending champion and top seed Daniel Medvedev will lock arms with local sensation Stefan Kozlov in the first round. World number five, Stefano Tsitsipas, former champion Dominic Thiem, sixth seed Feli Hore Eliassim, and tenth seed Taylor Fritz are also in the lineup on day one. However, men's world number three Rafael Nadal and women's world number one Iga Swiatek are lined up on day two. And now an overview of today's newspapers. All the dailies are covered with the news of the super demolition of the illegally built twin towers in Noida. Hindustan Times writes two towers out of the way, hundred more structures under scanner. The Times of India says 26 Noida officials booked for graft, no arrests so far. The Pioneer reports all over in a blink, leaving behind 75,000 to 80,000 tons of debris. Modi urges people to join campaign against malnutrition in his Man Ki Baat on Sunday headlines the Indian Express Suzuki to invest over 30000 crore rupees in India the Japanese automaker to set up electric cell plant in Gujarat and a vehicle unit in Haryana cites the Economic Times the Tribune notes facing serial deflections Congress to elect its chief on October 17th while its leader Anand Sharma raises doubts over voter list as the paper army begins upgrade of mechanized infantry setting up a brisk pace to equip its vital combat arm and finally mumbai's iconic double decker buses to make a comeback in a new avatar they will now be electric powered air conditioned writes the hindu and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Narendra Modi says 50% of India's energy production will be met by non-fossil fuel by 2030. Prime Minister urges people to take part in efforts to eradicate malnutrition. Telecom and IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav says government is likely to introduce data protection bill in budget session of parliament. Three Naxalites including a woman arrested in Gadchiroli district of Maharashtra. Deadly clashes in Libyan capital Tripoli claims 32 lives. 
Youth Affairs and Sports Ministry to organize Meet the Champion initiative in 26 schools across the country on occasion of National Sports Day today. Hardik Pandya's all-round brilliance inspires India to a five-wicket victory over Pakistan in Asia Cup opener. Prime Minister congratulates Indian team for their victory and US Open tennis tournament begins today in New York. And with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day.